When we improvise, we, we go down a road together. It's such fun to, to actually leave that road, but it's only nice and it's only a team and it's only something that works together if you come back. In the 20th century, so much music was written without, shall we say, the classical uh, feeling of harmony, 12-tone music and also diatonic, many kinds. Uh, young musicians today, they have less of a relationship with that. Young musicians in the orchestras too, they can play everything, the wonderful techniques, dexterity and all that, but they don't have because harmony gives you the feeling of connection. That's true. In other words, you play, you know, you, you, a tonality is established and this is, you know, this is your home. It's your and anchor. you don't leave it. You see it in the great composers, in Beethoven. You don't leave the tonality or a tonality that is related to it until it is firmly established. And then suddenly you hear the same melody in another tonality and it's like you went to a place where you actually need a visa to go. <laughs> it's so far away. In the Eroica symphony, it comes soft, loud in the orchestra, the whole orchestra, just the strings and things. And it is really brought into your system so that it's, it's as if you go somewhere in the woods and you get yourself a house and you know this is your home. After a while, you start walking around and you look at other things. And so when, after the exposition of the first movie of the Eroica, the theme comes in F major, which is not so far away, but you have a feeling it is miles, miles away. But for this, you have to establish the tonality. And this is why also the art of improvisation in classical music is not as strong as it was 200 or more more years ago. And it's a great pity because after all, to improvise means to play something that is unexpected. Would you say that the reason for that could be the absence of, of uh, the tonality awareness? Nowadays? Yes, definitely, definitely. But you know, we say in classical music too, oh, we'll improvise the dynamic and it means basically do something not planned. And improvise is not planned because you don't have the music in front of you, but you invent whatever comes to your mind and you play it. I think it's very important to at least try to touch and, 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 and talk about um, some of the cliches in improvisation and, and improvised music because, especially from a classical point of view, it seems like there's a certain insecurity uh, uh, and, and fear tied to that, which I think is absolutely unnecessary uh, if you are aware of what's happening harmonically in, in the, the tonality. We talked about that. Uh, the possibility to throw something out there that your partner in music you know, is actually taking to throw it back to you is based on the same principle. And uh, it's a language that I believe everybody can learn. It's not a mystery at all. It's basically learning vocabulary and, and, and copy it over and over again until you have so many words and so many ideas in mind that the way you combine them is turning into your language. And I think that's very important because, because that's how we learn other languages. That, that's how we speak. You know, now we speak about something uh, and we don't think about the words, at least no. you know, if, in an ideal world, uh, because we know what to talk about. And, uh, but we go, when we improvise, we, we go down a road together uh, and it's such fun to, to actually leave that road, but it's only nice and it's only a team and it's only something that works together if you come back to the road you go together. You lose the sense of it if you don't come back. People listening to improvised music, they get it the moment you come back. Not so much when you go out, but when you come back, they realize what you've done. And that only works uh, if, you, if you are in control of uh, the form, which is also another point there. I mean, there's very improvised and, and very free and, and, and open forms in, in, in jazz, which is great, which is probably the highest 
the highest stage of improvisation because it's full trust in your counterpart. It's full trust in that you're going to make something out of it. Um, but I think it's even more of a, of a challenge uh, to, to have some rules uh, together, uh, which also makes it easier for the audience to participate uh, that we can improvise on. And, and uh, the most easiest example would actually be to, to try to, to show that with a song that everybody knows. Like, uh, we can name something that, you know, like Old MacDonald had a farm, or Happy Birthday, maybe. Sorry. So, everybody knows Happy Birthday, and the way I'm, I'm going to improvise it is just leaving the melody like they did at the beginning of the, the 20th century. You know, slowly, but more courageous every time. Wonderful, it's, wonderful. But we, oh, we keep hearing the melody. We of can course. sing along, the whole audience can sing along the melody uh, while you improvise, because that's what our basis is. It's like reading uh, a poem it's, that everybody knows. It's, it's, it's reading the, the Vater Unser or something, you know, the, something that, it's like, like um, the national anthem. If you improvise the national anthem, it, it's, it's, it's going to be great because everybody will understand you. It's having the same lyrics or the same poem read by 10 of the most famous actors out there. Because you want to know how they do it. Because everybody knows the poem. Everybody knows the prayer. But the way how they do it, you know, to, 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 to listen to how they do it is actually where the magic is being yeah. used. Now something I always wanted to ask you, um, you know, the different instruments in the orchestra are associated with uh, certain activities. The horns for the hunting, the woodwinds for nature, etc., etc. The trumpet in the Latin countries, in Italy, always calls for death. In the corrida in Spain, the trumpet, the Verdi Requiem, and in Eastern Europe, especially in what was Czechoslovakia, Smetan and Dvořák, they call to the dance. Yes. The trumpet always was an instrument that called for something. Do you feel something like that in the jazz too or not? Uh, absolutely. Uh, in, in the dictionaries you can find the trumpet um, as the king. Uh, of, of jazz. Somehow, you know, the, the very important bands in the beginning were mostly led by trumpet players. King Oliver, Louis Armstrong, you know, it, it's a signal actually. It's coming back to the battlefield, even though that was a, that's a very tragic part of, of it. But you hear the trumpet, so it's, it's I'm here, this is the way we go, uh, but you have to make up your mind and come up with something that is actually worth to throw out there. <laughs> Otherwise, wow. everybody's going to ask you, what are you doing? It's, it's, it's a first-row instrument, even though it's in the back. I will never forget when we met the first time, you and I, where you told me, I've been around for so many years, I can smell a cracked note that's going to happen the next second. I thought that was one of the best things I've ever heard because <laughs> I was so true. And I, I also thought that's one of the most intimidating things, you know, because of course you can smell it. You could, of course you can, you can find the it. Insecurity it's, that the insecurity that comes before. You hear it right away. You see it and, uh, and there's a good reason for it. So yes, but you don't, that's what you I, don't suffer from In the that. classical world, I, I, I'm, I'm good where I am. <laughs> very good. But still, thank you very much for coming. Thanks it for having very, me. very, very enjoyable. Thank you. thank you so, so much. Thank you very much. Mm.